God's grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Today we will be beginning a four-part sermon series on discipleship, which happens to coincide with our gospel readings for the rest of the time. Today we're going to be looking at the call, the call to discipleship. Every call to become one of the disciples of Jesus happens individually. It happens personally. One at a time, our Lord graciously calls us to follow Him. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, we respond in faith. Today, we hear the call of an individual, Matthew or Levi in the other Gospels, who was, of course, a tax collector. Jesus called him to be his disciple. So let's take a deep dive into our text and see if it can better help us understand our call to discipleship. It all started with a simple phrase. Jesus said, follow me. Without any background, without any family information, without any personal history, Jesus calls him while he is working at a tax collector's office. From our text, we don't hear that they had any prior relationship or connection. Jesus just looked at him and said, follow me. And Matthew's response seems as equally basic as Jesus' request. And he rose and followed him. Think about this scene for a moment. Try to conjure up an image in your mind that you might look at. There was Matthew with all his fellow tax collectors. Men widely despised by their fellow Jews for selling out their neighbors for money. And while he was probably there sitting at his table with a pile of coins he had collected in front of him, Jesus stands there before him with those piercing eyes and looks straight at him and says, follow me. And then he raises his finger to make sure Matthew knew who he was talking to. Matthew stands to his feet, looks at Jesus and says, who, me? And pointing at himself with one hand on the money, he is at a pivotal moment in his life. He is at a moment in his life that will be an ultimate turning point, a separation. And as he stands there, he ponders. Do I reject Jesus' call and stay here with my life of wealth and ease and comfort? Or do I respond to him and follow? I wonder if this moment was in Matthew's mind when he wrote down Jesus' words earlier in his gospel. No one can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. Being a disciple of Jesus always comes with some separation. Separation from the life you knew, because you're being called to a greater life. Now, it's probably hard for most of us to pinpoint this moment in our lives when we first heard the call of our Lord. For many of us, it happened when we were but infants at the font of baptism. Or maybe you were a youth, a teen, hearing the gospel message purely for the first time. Or maybe you are on your deathbed 
and someone finally gets through to you. It doesn't matter when it happens because it is a lifelong event, a lifelong calling to separation, to separate ourselves from a world of sin, to separate ourselves from the false gods of this age, to separate ourselves for the love of this sin-fallen flesh. On our account, Jesus called us to better. But our text continues with dinner. Shortly after the call, we find ourselves at Matthew's house, where Jesus has come to have dinner. Now we learn it's not only Jesus and Matthew having dinner, and Jesus reclined at the table in the house, and behold, many tax collectors and sinners came and were reclining with Jesus and his disciples. So there we find Jesus with his disciples, and Matthew with his co-workers and other sinners. Jesus may have called Matthew to separate from his former vocation, but Jesus didn't separate him from the people in his life. He didn't call him away from those relationships. Whoever was invited to dinner, Matthew would have been obligated to welcome them, to serve them. The laws of hospitality at that time were no small task. To follow Jesus, to become his disciple, doesn't mean that we abandon everyone in our lives. Instead, it means we bring them. We bring them along to encounter Jesus for themselves. And this happens all the time. When we share the gospel of Jesus with the people Jesus has placed in our lives, they encounter Jesus. When you invite your friends to church, they encounter Jesus. And when we respond in faith to our Lord's gracious invitation to a dinner which He has prepared, we encounter Jesus. Now, in our text, we're never told what happened to Matthew or to or Matthew's co-workers because of this encounter with their Lord. But we're sure that Jesus spoke with them too. In fact, we know this because the Pharisees are annoyed with Jesus. Familiarity with those type of people. But knowing the outcome of that interaction isn't what matters. Because sometimes we don't always know the outcome of the Holy Spirit. But what does matter was Matthew's testimony. After this short reading, we didn't really learn much more about Matthew. But it doesn't diminish the significance of his testimony. Matthew doesn't go into detail about himself because he goes into detail about his call. And I'm sure before he wrote down his gospel, the gospel according to Matthew, he shared this story with everyone who asked. I'm sure his testimony about Jesus, even if it was informal, perhaps around another dinner table, was sufficient. Sufficient to create and strengthen the faith of those who heard it. And that's what we do as disciples. We live and love and we profess our Lord by the words of our mouth. And that is certainly worth consideration for us as Jesus' disciples today. So that we might make a positive impact on our world that we might be separated from a world of sin and death to proclaim
proclaim the excellencies of him who has called us each by name. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen.